Story time with Fergie and friends. Hello, it's story time with Fergie and friends, and I'm delighted. And it's building up towards it's the advent time, and it's uh, hello, mums and dads, girls and boys, aunts and uncle, granny, grandpa. Yes, and I think this is very special. It's a lovely book by by Monica Berg, Abigail Berg, and Sonia. Pocentini and thank you so much what a beautiful book it's called The Gift of Being Different and it's a I decided to ring it read it on story time right now because it's just a, a very special time of year when we think of everybody and this is a a really special gift that is being is being different but it's been uh, really beautifully written so I'd love love to do a big shout out story time Fergie and friends hello and join us today on in december days leading up holiday time so here we have it monica berg abigail berg and sonia Posentini. what a beautiful book the gift of being different when eight-year-old abigail learns she has a superpower well do you have superpowers too i bet you do how exciting hi i'm abigail i'm eight years old and i just found out that i have a superpower sure i love superpowers which are kindness don't you? What's it like to have a superpower? Well, at the beginning of it, uh, at the beginning, it really felt lonely. I knew I was different because I had trouble reading in school. During language arts, me and all the other students in my class work together in small groups. Each group is a different colour. I'm in the blue group, which made me really happy at first because blue is my favourite colour. Then I noticed that the yellow and green groups read more exciting books. Me and my other blue group kids read books that are really pretty boring. This made me sad because I love stories, especially ones with imaginary creatures in them like dragons and griffins. The yellow group kids do fun activities and they, got, they get to talk a lot. I'm really good at talking, but me and the other blue group kids spend most of our time reading words. I practice and practice, but reading is still really hard for me. We have to read sentences out loud and when I read Reads too slow, I can feel other kids looking at me. It makes my stomach feel swirly. My teacher told me to focus, but I was focusing. I concentrated so much on the letters and words that my head would start to hurt. I know the letters, I know the sounds, but it takes me a while to put them together. And sometimes my brain fit flops the letters, so it sounds wrong when I try to read the words. One day, my mum picked me up from school early and I thought, I, may, I, I thought maybe we were going to the dentist, which I love because I get to wear sunglasses and watch TV while lying down. But we didn't go to the dentist. We went to a building I'd never seen before. I met a lady named Dr. Laura. We played together and read books. We talked about words and sounds. It wasn't scary. She was really nice. Still, it made me kind of nervous when Dr. Laura wrote in her notebook when we were done. I got to play in a room with lots of toys while my mum and Dr. Laura talked. Mm. Oh dear. On the way home, my mum told me that I have something called uh, dyslexia. Hmm. It means I learn in a different way, which is why language arts has, has been so tricky for me. Mum said it made me special. She also said I would have someone to help me when, with reading every afternoon. I thought and thought about this and watched the buildings whiz by the car window until we finally turned a corner and the neighborhood was familiar again. Mum made my favorite dinner that night, spaghetti with meatballs, which always makes me happy, but I felt, I still felt confused about this new thing, dyslexia. It didn't sound like something anybody was lucky to have and I wasn't feeling very special. Hmm. My brother Josh is special because he has a superpower. His superpower is kindness. He uses it to make other people smile and feel happy inside. Dyslexia wasn't making me feel powerful and I was pretty sure I couldn't use it to make other people feel happy inside. I decided to ask my mum for more information. She knows a lot about things. Mummy, do I have to get extra help because I'm stupid? No, of course not, she said. Having dyslexia doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you learn differently and you see the world differently. And that might just be your special superpower. In fact, Abigail, you're exceptionally intelligent. Intelligent means really smart. How can dyslexia be a superpower when everyone else is looking for at a problem or a situation one way? You'll be looking at it from an entirely different angle. 
That means you'll be able to see solutions other people don't. You'll be able to spot hidden potential and hidden paths. Potential is all the great things that you could be and you could do. I like the sound of this, but I felt doubtful. I want to believe her, though, isn't that what moms are supposed to say? She must have been able to see all the questions on my face because she grabbed a book out of her bag and opened it. She told me Dr. Laura gave her this book about dyslexia so she can understand how I learn. Mum pointed to a page in the book where she had written the words in red pen that Abigail, Abigail to a T. What does that mean? I asked, it means this describes you perfectly, she said, and it doesn't say anything in here about kids with dyslexia being stupid. My mum read this, the page to me and explained some things she learned about people who have dyslexia. I found out that my superpower makes me... Ah, my superpower was starting to sound really great. This is why I ask lots of questions. My superpowers think with pictures instead of words. Instead of only seeing things how they are, my brain can see the way things could be. Very aware of the things around me, able to understand things by listening to my heart. Hmm, understand things better by using all my senses. Super duper imaginative, extremely curious about the world. Abigail to a T, superpowers of people who are dyslexic. Wow. In fact, said my mom, did you know that many famous inventors, artists and engineers had dyslexia? Really, I couldn't believe it. It's true. She pointed to another page in the book, people like Albert Einstein, who developed the theory of relativity, Steven Spielberg, who makes brilliant films, Anne Bancroft, who was the first woman to cross the Arctic ice and reach the North Pole on dog sled, <gasps> Pablo Picasso, who created some of the most fascinating works of art, and Alexander Graham Bell, who invented the telephone. So they did cool things even though they had dyslexia, I asked. No, Abigail, they achieved great things because of their dyslexia, said Mom. It was this gift that allowed them to create and think in new and creative ways. This was their superpower and it's your superpower too. Whoa, this made me think about dyslexia differently. Oh, how exciting is that? But I still had more questions. Mum, then why do I need extra help to learn to read? Well, she said, superheroes need different tools than everyone else. Your tutor will help you use your dyslexia. It's not something you need to overcome. It's a gift. You just need to learn how to use it. Am I going to grow out of it? No, Abigail, you'll never grow out of it. It will be your superpower forever. And we're going to help you grow into it. I grew into my sister's old roller skates. I grew into broccoli. I used to hate it. And I'm finally tall enough to ride big kid roller coasters, but I've never grown into a superpower before. Mum hugged me. Soon after that, Josh popped his head into my room. Want to see my new dance move, he asked. Of course, I said. The answer is always of course. Josh played his, favorite, his new favourite song on his cell phone and danced around in circles. He became so shiny that I could feel myself beginning to shine also. Then he sat next to me on my bed. Hey, I heard you have a superpower too. I nodded my head. Talking to Josh felt like a warm hug. That's really great, he said. Why is it great, I asked. Because superheroes work better in pairs. It's about time I had a sidekick. This made me smile so big. I always wanted to be more like Josh. I think we make a pretty good team. Having dyslexia doesn't feel so lonely anymore when I think about it as a way to look at the world in a new way, solve problems and help others. It makes me feel super powerful. Yay! Well done, Monica Berg. How fantastic. Abigail Berg and Sonia Cosentini. What a clever team you are. And thank you all for a beautiful, beautiful book. And for those of you out there, we, they're dedicating this entire book to all the children and former children of world who at one point or another felt judged, weird, excluded, different, ostracized or stupid. My wish is that we all come to love and accept our differences so completely that we see them as the gifts that they are. I could not agree more. I agree with that completely. Well done indeed and what a gift. So at this time of year when everyone's giving gifts, let's give this beautiful book, The Gift of Being Different, well done, Monica Berg, Abigail Berg and Sonia Posentini.
Story time with Fergie and friends. 